Today we're diving into the intriguing history of a hormone that has captivated the world of bodybuilding and athletics for decades, Trenbolone. But before we delve into the mesmerizing tales of this compound, let's start at the very beginning. The story of Trenbolone begins in 1960s Paris, when a pharmaceutical company called Roussel Ouclaf created Trenbolone as a means to enhance cattle farming. Roussel Ouclaf was a small pharmaceutical company with only one other notable drug for abortion, and they were looking to expand their portfolio. This drug had the remarkable ability to accelerate growth and strength of cattle, potentially revolutionizing the industry. However, it took several years for Trembolone to gain approval for use in the livestock sector. Fast forward to the early 1970s, and Trembolone finally receives recognition as a powerful tool in beef cattle promotion. In those days, it was commonly known as Finyject, and was directly injected into the muscles of cattle. However, in the late 1980s, the direct injection method was replaced by a more convenient alternative, Finaplex pellets. These small implants could be administered behind the ear of the animal using a pellet gun. But as with many stories, word spread about this extraordinary anabolic steroid, and creative bodybuilders saw an opportunity. They used solvents and filters to extract the hormone from the cattle pellets, transforming it into an injectable form. Recognizing that people were modifying drugs for their personal use, Negma Laboratories from France hurried to develop the first human-grade trenbolone ester, known as trenbolone hexahydrobenzylcarbonate, or paraboline. By the early 1980s, this steroid gained popularity amongst athletes and bodybuilders worldwide. Quickly, vast quantities were shipped illicitly into various European countries and the United States. However, as awareness grew regarding trenbolone's use as a performance-enhancing drug, regulators cracked down. And in 1987, Parabolan was discontinued, and is still the only Trembolone ester that was manufactured for human use. In the meantime, Roussel Ouclaf's experimentation paid off, because by this time, their abortion medication became mainstream, and they sold their company in a merger deal, which eventually brought us the French pharma giant Sanofi. Nevertheless, the Pandora's box had been opened, and different Trembolone esters with varying half-lives emerged, propelling Trembolone to the forefront of the bodybuilding scene. Although bodybuilders frequently turned to Trenbolone for its ability to create a dry and shredded physique before competitions, athletes and anti-doping sanctioned events generally steered clear of it. This was until an infamous incident shed new light on Trenbolone's notoriety. The Duchess cocktail administered to Russian athletes at the Sochi Winter Olympics contained an ester of Trenbolone amongst other substances. Although they brought in their own twist, the athletes absorbed the drug by swishing it in their cheeks, hoping to shorten the detection window. Due to Trenbolone's widespread use in veterinary medicine, traces of its metabolites are often found in cattle worldwide, despite its ban on cattle in Europe in 1988 and in the US in 2008. This fact came to light when in 2018, a 90-year-old cyclist named Carl Grove tested positive for a Trenbolone metabolite at a competition. Because he had tested negative the day before, the positive result was attributed to meat consumed between the previous negative test. Was Carl on gear? I don't know. You decide. Questions have arisen regarding Trenbolone's legitimacy in clinical settings. While many anabolic steroids have clinical applications, Trenbolone has never been tested in humans. And because of this, there is no pharmacological supply, and the lack of safe supply has left people searching online for inferior products. The production of Trenbolone in the pharmaceutical industry is shrouded in mystery. It's unclear on where it comes from, which results in lots of fakes hitting the market. Despite these challenges, human ingenuity prevails again, and bodybuilders have developed their own methods to test the validity of their Trenbolone, one of which involves measuring its melting point. By understanding the melting point of Trenbolone acetate and conducting a simple test using a hot plate, people can assess the purity and legitimacy of the compound. More on this in the link in the description. Humans have always been drawn to shiny things, and in the realm of steroids, Trenbolone is the shiniest. Despite the controversy, it continues to find its place in the realm of underground laboratories and daring individuals who seek its benefits. For all the best drug information, I use our software, Polypharm Solutions, where you can conduct drug interaction scans and predict drug side effects. Use the link in the description to sign up for the mobile app waitlist or use our web app for free. If you like this video, I recommend you subscribe and check out this video. The YouTube algorithm thinks you're really going to like it. Cheers.